We are back talking about coverage of anti-abortion legislation. So Late-term abortion. Sweeping new restrictions on abortion. At least 15 states have enacted abortion restrictions or outright bans in 2019. The spotlight is back on abortion, which means politicians on both sides of the aisle are spinning facts to support their side of the debate. So what's right and what's flat out wrong? Anti-abortion advocates have claimed abortion is more dangerous than ever before. Live Action told us they were editorializing, and they deleted the original tweet. They said their judgment was based on the fact that there's limited data about complications associated with abortions. But overall, the mortality rate for a woman having an abortion is very low. Now, abortions have less short-term risk than carrying a pregnancy to term. Abortion rights advocates paint a bleak picture of the future for women if Roe v. Wade is overturned. This is a very dangerous time for women's health in our country. Before Roe v. Wade, thousands of people died every year because they didn't have access to safe legal abortion. Abortion was recorded as the official cause of death for thousands of women in the 1930s and 40s, but the stigma associated with the procedure meant those numbers aren't concrete. By the 1950s, antibiotics like penicillin and improved contraception methods helped curb the mortality rate. The year before Roe v. Wade, official reports said fewer than 100 women died as a result of abortions, legal or illegal. So it's unlikely that thousands of women would die if Roe v. Wade was overturned, since abortion access would revert back to something similar to what we saw in 1972. But that's not all that abortion rights advocates are worried about. For women that are really in that difficult position, so-called late-term abortions, some people try to make that think that that's something that commonly happens. That happens when a woman's life is being threatened uh, uh, and the viability of the fetus uh, um, uh, as well is, is, is compromised. Those are very, very limited circumstances uh, and necessary. And the reasons are heartbreaking. You're going to hear the term fetal viability over and over and over again. It basically means that a fetus can survive outside the womb, assuming we're talking about a normal pregnancy. The vast majority of abortions take place in the first trimester. Just 1.3% happen after 21 weeks. Diana Green Foster has studied women who elect to have abortions after 20 weeks for reasons other than compromised fetal viability or danger to a woman's life. Women having abortions at 20 weeks tends to be women who didn't realize they were pregnant and then had a whole bunch of access barriers trying to get in to get their abortion. That characterizes women having abortions 20 to 24 weeks, but it doesn't characterize women having, having abortions in the third trimester. And the reasons nobody has studied, but it's extremely unlikely that it's just delay in realizing you're pregnant. In other words, we don't know the exact breakdown of why that 1.3% of women decide to have abortions after 20 weeks. Another claim that you'll hear a lot from anti-abortion advocates comes in the form of current and proposed legislation. Weeks ago, lawmakers in New York cheered as they passed legislation to allow babies to be ripped from the womb of their mother. And then you have this governor in Virginia, you saw that. The baby is born and you wrap the baby beautifully and you talk to the mother about the possible execution of the baby. Let's be clear, infanticide or killing a child within a year of birth is illegal. So just what did the New York law and the Virginia proposal allow? It's helpful to first understand what has been allowed since Roe. Let me read you what Roe v. Wade said in 1973, 46 years ago. It said that states may ban abortion after viability. However, they have to allow it where it is necessary in appropriate medical judgment for the preservation of the life or health of the mother. New York essentially codified this language into state law. What New York passed has been the law in the United States for 46 years. In Virginia, it's comparable. Virginia's proposal edited the state's current law, reducing the number of doctors required to sign off on third trimester abortions from three to one, and it dropped a qualifier that continuing pregnancy would have to substantially and irremediably harm a woman's mental or physical health. In other words, these proposals define the circumstances when abortion after viability can happen. 
they do not allow infanticide. Essentially, advocates on both sides of this issue will twist the facts and use misleading data in order to prove their point.